Hello and welcome to Cardiac Anatomy for Radiology. This is part of a 10-part series looking at the anatomy of the heart, particularly from an imaging anatomy point of view. It's particularly useful for radiologists, for anyone sitting the FRCR examinations, and also for anyone wanting to brush up on their cardiac imaging anatomy. So let's get going on part one, the cardiac chambers. Before we start looking at the chambers themselves, let's have a think about the heart and its position in the body. When we think about it as a 3D structure, the heart is sitting in the middle of the chest, surrounded by the lungs and then the rib cages. The classical anatomists caused us a few problems, however. They didn't think that the heart in its actual genuine position really reflected the beautiful symmetrical thing that the human body should be. So they described right and left in a slightly off-axis sort of way, which gives us a few problems now because the right ventricle is actually this bit right in the middle of the body rather than being necessarily the bit on the right. But we'll come back to that. First of all, what are the cardiac chambers? Well, there's four of them. There's two at the top, which are the atria, and there's two at the bottom, which are the ventricles. In this nice diagrammatic form, we've got a right side and a left side, like the classical anatomists liked. However, when we put it into the human body, the heart is swung round so that we've got the right ventricle at the front. So here we've got the two chambers at the top here are the atria, and the two chambers at the bottom here are the ventricles. And this side is the right side, which is the one near the front of the body, which is here. This is the sternum here, and this is the rib cage. And then the two further towards the back and swung round a little are the left chambers here. So right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. Let's look at them in a bit more detail. So first of all, the right atrium. So the right atrium is this structure in here, and it's where the venous blood flows into the heart. And it flows in through the superior vena cava and through the inferior vena cava into the right atrium here. Next, the blood moves from the right atrium and into the right ventricle. So this is again a thin-walled structure. It's got this moderator band, which is a thick band that goes across it. And from the right ventricle, the pulmonary artery leaves, making the blood go towards the lung. After the blood's been in the lungs, the blood comes back through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, with this part here being the left atrium, and this is the left ventricle down here with the lungs out to the side here. We're looking at the back of the heart here, so the back of the body is back here, and we can see that these structures here are the pulmonary veins coming into this structure here, the left atrium. This is some other views of the left atrium. So we've got the left atrium here. I love this one. It's a sort of Mickey Mouse with the ears here. These ears are the pulmonary veins. So the pulmonary veins come in from the lungs into the left atrium. And then from the left atrium, the blood flows into the left ventricle. So the left ventricle is this thick-walled, very muscular pumping chamber. It's got papillary muscles here which are attached to little cordae, which you can almost see, you can see I've got the arrow here, which attach to the valve leaflets here. We'll come back to the valves later. But the combination of the thick wall and the papillary muscles help you know that this is the left ventricle, whereas this thin walled structure with a moderator band is the right ventricle. This thick walled muscle of the left ventricle is called the left ventricular myocardium. So if you imagine the left ventricle like a cone, as we can see here. If you imagine standing on top of the cone and squashing it down, you can get this sort of squatted bullseye. We can divide the left ventricle into sections. We've got a section here, the basal section, the midsection, and the apical section, and then the apex here. And then you can see you've got concentric rings, basal, mid, apical, and then apex. And we can call these different sections by name. We've got anterior, inferior, lateral and septal and the combination of the different names means you could have 
an anterior septal basal portion of the left ventricle. And these are the standard ways that um, nuclear medicine and perfusion goes about um, describing the left ventricle and sections of the left ventricular myocardium. Each of these different sections is supplied by different coronary territories, such as this top portion here being supplied by the LED, this one here by the right coronary artery, and this section here by the left circumflex in a standard right dominant model. So that's the four main cardiac chambers. We've also got a couple of other little chambers, and these are called the atrial appendages. And you can see them here on the 3D model of the heart. We've got one coming out the right atrium here, which is the right atrial appendage, and one coming out of the left atrium here, which is the left atrial appendage. And these little structures just sort of hug the heart. On axial imaging, we can see here we've got a right atrial, sorry, a left atrial appendage here and a right atrial appendage here. And on this nice two chamber view here, we've got left ventricle, left atrium, and coming out of the left atrium, the left atrial appendage. Now these can have variable sizes, variable positions, and they're really important to have a look at, particularly this left atrial appendage, because you can get thrombus within it. So last but not least, we've got the septum to think about. So this is the structure that's between the atrium on one side and the atrium on the other side, or the ventricle on one side and the ventricle on the other side. So the part between the atria is called the interatrial septum, and the part between the ventricles is called the interventricular septum. So here on our nice four-chamber view, in between atria on one side and atria on the other, we've got interatrial septum, and in between the ventricle on one side and ventricle on the other, we've got the interventricular septum. And this is really important because if you get gaps, either the interventricular septum or the interatrial septum, you get a ventricular septal defect or an atrial septal defect, which can go on to cause problems. You can also get a little gap in the interatrial septum, which is a patent foramen ovale, and this is incredibly common. And if you've got your CT scan set up nicely, you can see it on CT scanning, and it's often seen on echo. So that's all for part one of Cardiac Anatomy for Radiology. I hope to see you again for part two.